We're on the beat with Tony Maroney, and we have Nick Marciano with us, who is a uh, writer, director, uh, producer, and he's just finished a book called David's Child, uh, Nick Marciano. Nick, welcome to uh, On the Beat with Tony Maroney. Thank you very much, Tony. It's a pleasure. Okay, so Nick, uh, we're talking about your new uh, novel, mm -hmm. which we're here at the Schomburg uh, Street Fest. Yes. Uh, book signing, uh, but the book is actually released when? Uh, October the 4th, it goes worldwide and they can uh, can get it on Amazon or uh, all the major outlets. Yes, so it's pretty exciting. Okay, so you started as a producer. Your your first film is uh, actually uh, La Vita Cani with uh, Carlo Leconte as a director. Yes. And uh, that, that that is a uh, an Italian name, but it's not an Italian movie. No, no. Uh, Carlo came up with that title. Uh, to this day, I, I, I don't know why, but uh, uh, but we, we had fun. I learned a lot. It was a learning experience for me, and uh, it was good enough to get shown at the Montreal Film Festival. So, okay. After you finish the um, La Vita Cani, your your next film um, actually had your kids in it. And, and they never acted before, but they did an amazing job. And you got critical acclaim from New York writers, uh, Frank Judge from Rochester, uh, Barbara and Scott Siegel from New York. Uh, they loved the film. Uh, tell us something about that. It was shot on 16 millimeter. Yes. And um, it, it, tell us the whole experience there. Um, well, I learned a lot from Carlo by doing the uh, Vita Cane. And uh, I don't know if I ever, if I ever, thought I could do it or direct because I never I never went to film school or anything like that but I, I, it's all self thought so uh, Todd sorry so I said why not go for it just direct the film and write a script and direct the film and see what happens and uh, yeah we did it a bunch of kids and they reacted before and uh, it was a fun film to make and it's still showing occasionally on uh, TV it's called Shepherd Boys uh, and it's also on video uh, in Montreal in French <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah um, it uh, was paralleled to one of these, I forgot the name of the film, but they kind of paralleled it to a, an American film by a big director. What, what was that film? Uh, the Outsiders. That's, that's yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, the, a lot like The Outsiders. Yeah. With the $10 million less, of course, to, for us to do it. <laughs> and then you went on to a couple of short films. Uh, tell us about The Tree. What was the story behind The Tree? And it was also in the Toronto Worldwide Short Film Festival. Yes, uh, it was just a short film. Uh, I wasn't doing anything that year, and I really wanted to do something to continue learning. So uh, uh, I thought of this idea of, of the, the tree that was used for the cross where Christ got uh, crucified. And uh, it's in stages, and, and uh, it, it, was, it worked out okay. And again, it got, it got accepted at a festival. So it was, that was exciting as well. And the look of this film, it really looked like you had... Um, uh, oh, oh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I moved the camera. Uh, the, the, the film actually looked like it was shot in the Middle East somewhere. Tell us about that whole story. Yes, there's a, there's a location in Caledon. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an old ocean bed. I don't know how many thousands of years ago it dried up and it left this red, red clay. Uh, it, it, it gives the impression it's the Middle East. So that's where we shot it. We shot it in there, and I was also uh, very careful not to uh, uh, pan the camera at a certain area that would make it look like Calvin. But um, now we, 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 we shot it in one day, and again, it got, it got accepted at the film festival. So it was pretty exciting. And then after that, you did a short film, Links, for, for somebody who you had directed, but you you did you didn't produce it you directed this one yes it was a gentleman that a, a business associate of mine that uh, his his father passed away and he wanted to do something in his memory his father's memory so um, yeah we shot it it was uh, a couple of days we, we did it uh, edited it and uh, he still has the film I'm not sure what he did with it because he owned it but uh, yes we did that as well so there was one film called American Slaves which was done in 2001 um, you shot up in Huntsville uh, for a whole weekend. Tell, tell us about that. Well, that was uh, uh, something that I wrote, a short, uh, short story that I wrote, and I changed it into, into a script. And it's supposed to take place in um, uh, Carolina, Tennessee, one of those states, in the southern states. 
and I had to find a location to represent that because obviously we didn't have enough money in the budget even to go to the States, let alone to uh, Carolina. Um, so we, we found a place, we found uh, about 15, 20 acres that somebody donated up in, uh, up in Huntsville. And uh, it's a historical piece. It's a little, little difficult. This is my first uh, first hist historical piece to do to, that I produced. But um, the end result, I was very happy with it. Um, unfortunately, I don't know why, but it wasn't uh, wasn't accepted anywhere here in, in uh, Canada or in Toronto. Um, I'm very proud of it. You had actual actual Swahili being spoken by the slaves. Yes, we had an interpreter come with us, and uh, I wanted it to be a little different than other 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 where we, they would speak their actual language when they got when the slaves came over from uh, from Africa, and uh, we we I, f I found a, a, a teacher that can translate, and she was actually translating while the actors were acting. She was translating away from the camera and uh, helping them that way. And, it, and, and the main actor uh, Lincoln Warchild Russell recently died, which is kind of sad. I, I just heard about it, but um, I, I guess you hadn't kept in touch with him, but how did you meet uh, Lincoln? Um, yeah, it's unfortunate he passed away because he was a really, really, really good, good, uh, no, just, uh, he's a good actor. And uh, I met him uh, in one of my acting classes and, you know, he had that, he had to show that gangster thing but he wasn't that at all. And uh, when I took him, uh, when I uh, decided to take him on, um, I just said to him, you have to keep your ego in place or this is not gonna work. And uh, true to his word, he did, and it was a pleasure working for him. He absolutely did everything that he was supposed to. And then of course, uh, there was Lee's Offering, which was your latest film. Um, tell us a bit about that. You had people like George Chevallo, Spider Jones, uh, very talented cast, David Usher. Uh, tell us about that. Um, it's the first film with uh, with a fair size budget, uh, and yes, we got uh, uh, I got Spider Jones originally, and he suggested I, I try George Chevallo as well because it was a part strictly for for George Chevallo would have fit in like a glove, and uh, I approached them and and uh, just real nice guy. You know, he's a little bit intimidating, of course. You know, he fought these big heavyweight bouts. But he uh, he joined he joined our, our our acting staff and it was great he was a lot of fun to work with. And and now you've written this book, um, David's Child, which was originally a screenplay, but it's become a book. Tell us how that evolved. Um, Javon, who's my wife now, read the script, and she's asked me if um, if it would ever get made into a film. And I said, you know, hopefully one day, but I don't think so because I just, had, I, I just got tired of going begging for money to make films. So uh, she says, well, won't you, won't you try to try attempt to write a book on it? It'd be a shame to waste such a good story. So I said, okay, fine, I'll try it. I wasn't doing anything at the time, so I, sh I, I wrote it. Um, it. Took me about two and a half years, and I was waiting for the the usual one to three years of rejections before hopefully somebody would pick it up. Uh, but you know, luck was on my side and the first two people I sent it to, two publishers in the States, both wanted it. Which, I, I still don't believe it to this day. Uh, but they're great. It's Tate Publishing, uh, are the publishers, they're from Oklahoma. And uh, they've been nothing but really good to me up to now, yes. And, and here you are at a book signing and how many more days of book signings do you have? Uh, uh, two more next week. <laughs> two more next week, and then uh, and then from that point onward, the publisher will set things up for me to uh, to go and do it. Uh, book signings. They they do it right from the states. Well, there we have it. Uh, the history of uh, Caledon Films, and uh, we've been speaking to Nick Marciano, um, who's a writer, producer, director. Uh, thank you very much for coming on the beat. Oh, pleasure, Tony. Thank you very much. Thank you.